stand up and before you and preach on something. It's always a continuation. <laughs> God is teaching us line upon line, precept upon precept. And he's bringing out just some, some really um, revelation concerning his word for us to walk in and to receive what God has for us and to experience God's grace in another way that we've never had before. And it is absolutely awesome. So to this morning, I want to talk to you about activating the grace of God through faith. And we just, I mean, we're so appreciative. Thank God for his grace that he has placed upon us, his empowerment that comes on our lives for us to be and to do all that God is calling us to be and to do. His grace is all of God's provisions for your life. That is everything that you need for your life. God has bring it and has given it to us by his power. That's his grace being bestowed upon every single one of us. God has graced every single one of you in, with, um, in relative to what he has called you to do, what he has called you to be, and what he has for your life. There's a grace on your life for everything in your life. How many want to activate the grace of God on your life? And this grace on my life can be multiplied. This grace can be extended. It can grow. You can grow in the grace of God. And, and God has so much for you and I. I don't want to miss out on anything that God has for me. And so I want to learn how to activate the grace of God on my life. And so I can be the wife that God's called me to be. Be the mother that he's called me to be. Be the woman of God he's called me to be. Be the pastor he's called me to be. Be the minister, the prophet that God has called me to be. There's a grace on my life for those things and all the provision that comes along with it. Hallelujah. And so there are things in your life that you're struggling with that you haven't received yet because we haven't learned how to activate the grace of God that God has given us to tap into that grace so that we can see what God says belong to every single one of us. If you will turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1, first of all, and we'll start there. Now in the lesson this morning, we will review just a little bit to bring us up to date. And it's always good to review because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we want our faith always to be active. So every time we hear a word, it will produce the word of God that we receive and that we believe. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all here this morning? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. First Peter, I'm sorry, 2 Peter chapter 1. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the rights of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody said, I have, I have. Like, precious faith. like precious faith. Glory to God. He said, for those of you that have like precious faith, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He said, according as his divine power, that is his grace. His divine power being bestowed upon you and I, that is God's grace. And he said, according to this divine power unto us, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and virtue. He has called you to manifest the grace of God on your life, and he's called you to this ministry of this spirit of excellence that God's grace on your life should be seen. And he has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything you need to live a life like God, he's given it to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants you to live a life that like God, a life that is pleasing to God, and he's given you everything you need to live this kind of life. And so you don't have to be bound by sin. God's giving you godliness. He's giving you the characteristic, the nature of God that calls you to live free of sin. You don't have to live in lack. God's giving you everything that pertains to life, whatever you need to live life, so you there be no lack in your life. He wants you to live healthy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
So he's given you everything, all the tools necessary. There is no reason why you cannot live the life that God designed for you to live. Glory to God. And you will experience this life through the knowledge of him, through the word of God. And so he says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we may be a partaker of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And listen, he said he's given you these exceeding and great and precious promises, the word of God, so that you can be a partaker of God's divine nature. Verse 5, and besides this, giving all diligence... Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. And so God is, he's given you these things so you can look like him. That you will be a participant or a partner with the divine nature of God. How many know it's not in the nature of God to have lack of anything? How many know it's not in the nature of God to be sick, going through, defeated? So God has given you the word of God, his grace, so that you can have everything that will pertain to this life and godliness, and so that you will be a partaker of his divine nature. He's given you all things. Somebody said, I've got all things. I've got all things. Ephesians chapter 1. One day, one day y'all going to wake up one early in the morning, you know, and something's going to be missing. You're going to like, hey, wait a minute, hold up. I got everything. I mean, you're going you're gonna to just, it's going to, something's going to be not miss, something's going to be missing in your life that you think that you, that's missing, that you need, and you're going to be getting to pray, and all of a sudden, a, a light bulb's going to go off on you, going like, hey, wait a minute, I got all things. <laughs> Let it be this morning, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, I have all things that pertain to life and godliness. Glory to God. Now, one thing you cannot do, you cannot measure your natural man, your present situation with the word of God to determine whether God's word is true or not. You take the truth of God's word and it'll set you free and cause the things that you can see naturally to change into the image of what God has said and not what you see to determine what God has said. Somebody said, I have, all I have all things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so then we endeavor in this message to activate <laughs> the all things that God has given us. Activating God's grace through faith to receive and manifest the all things that God has given us. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul is writing, we heard Peter said, grace and peace be multiplied to you, that you will experience the things that God has to you through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that you will be a partaker of God's divine nature. Paul says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Somebody said, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. Now, God he said, Peter is saying, to those that are like precious faith, Paul is saying to the faithful, which is saying the same things, those that trust and believe in God. How many trust and believe God? Okay, he's writing to you. He said, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Come on. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now he said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Somebody said, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. With all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. I have everything that pertains to life and godliness. I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now he said, now you got to get this. He have, I probably should keep reading, but you, 
He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus according that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now God chose me before the world ever was and he already blessed me with all spiritual blessings. I was chosen so God already blessed me. Oh glory to God. Hallelujah. Having, verse 5, having predestinated us until the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good will of his pleasure. Somebody said, I've been adopted, I've been adopted. in the family of God. Family of God. Glory to God. Now, God predestined you to be adopted <laughs> through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. God accepted you before you got here. That's why you got here, because you were accepted. And when he created you, he created you that you should be holy and without blame before him in love. He predestined you to be adopted. He knew you were going to be born a sinner, but he predestined you to be adopted. And when he adopted you, he already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Why? To the praise of the glory of his grace. That you will experience his divine power and provisions for all things and give God glory. Hallelujah. In whom, verse 7, we have received or we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It was through redemption, Jesus purchasing your life, paid the penalty of sin, gave you the forgiveness of sin, and all the effects of sin. It is through the blood of Jesus that you and I experience redemption or you and I experience all that God had for you, all the spiritual blessings that are in Christ Jesus, that are in heavenly places, your healing, your deliverance, your prosperity, your victory. It has all been purchased through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. According to his grace that he has given to you and I, and God is saying because of his grace, you and I can experience the redemption that Jesus purchased through his blood. Hallelujah. And so God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now these things he said he did before the foundation of the world. God has already done all these things for you and I. Amen. Somebody said it's already done. And we've already experienced and we've been teaching that what you are praying for, what you believe God for, what you, what, everything that you expect God to do for you, that God has already done it. He has blessed you. Not I'm going to be blessed. He has blessed me. I walk in the blessing of Almighty God. There's a coat of God's anointing of blessing on my life. I am blessed. He has blessed me. It's already done. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, say, it's already done. Glory to God. He has, he has blessed you. Now, 1 Corinthians, let's look at this again. 1 Corinthians. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Somebody said, I am, I am blessed. Somebody said, it's done. It's done. Glory to God. Now, you know, hold your finger there. This, this script. Look at Revelations chapter 21. It's the last book in the Bible. Revelations chapter 21. Are you there? Verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, 
I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. Oh my God. I make all things new. Write it down. It's a true statement. It's faithful. It is done. Tell your neighbor again. Say, it is done. It is done. Hallelujah. Somebody say, it is done. It is done. Now he said to them, he said, I make all things new. And when God said, I'm making, oh, I made something, or I make something, when he said it, it's done. He said, you can write it down. This is faithful. It's true. It is done. I am the alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end. As a matter of fact, I declare the end right at the beginning. It is done. Isaiah 46, 10 says, God says, I declare the ending, the end from the beginning. And he said, those things, I've already declared them. I've already spoken them out of my mouth. So when you see the things that I've said, you know I said it. And you're going to see it after I said it. And you're going to know that I said it when you see it. <laughs> he says, let me quote the scripture, then you can know what I'm saying. <laughs> Isaiah 46, I declare your end from the beginning and from ancient times those things that have not yet been done so that my counsel will stand and you will, and I will see all of my good pleasure everything I said will stand and so God says listen write those things down I make everything new write it down this is a true and faithful saying and he said to them it is done in other words of saying it is done he said all things get this all things have been determined already. Everything has been determined, and now all the things that have been determined, it shall manifest in its due season. You will see the fulfillment of what already has been determined in its due season. I have already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. It has already been determined. And you will see its fulfillment. Glory to God. Is that why y'all looking at me? You couldn't hear me all that time? You will see its fulfillment in its due season glory to god but it's already done hallelujah glory to god and so here again god said he's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places first corinthians chapter 2 did you ever get there verse 14 says the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they're foolishness, they're foolish to him. Neither can he even know them because they are spiritually discerned. And so here's this natural man, cannot receive the things of the Spirit. So everything that God has already determined that I would have, it's not going to happen naturally. I can't receive it naturally. But I can receive it spiritually. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's why in order for a man to receive all that God has for them and grace them with, he must be born again. Amen. Glory to God. The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. They're foolishness unto him. Neither can he even know them. You can't even know naturally what God has for you. They are spiritually discerned. Your natural man will look and say, that I can't have it. I'm not educated enough. I'm not the right color. I'm not the right gender. I don't have the right education. I don't have what it takes. The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. Their foolishness. How are you going to give me the job? I don't even know how to do it. How are they going to give it to me? I'm only a woman. How are they going to make it happen for me? I'm only human. How is it going to be for me? The natural man cannot 
receive the things of the Spirit. He can't even know them. They're spiritually discerned. Verse 9 of that same chapter says, listen, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God, hallelujah, has revealed those things unto you and I by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 12 said that God has not given you the spirit of the world, but he's given you his spirit so that you would know the things that have been freely given unto you. The natural man can't receive it, but God has revealed it to my spirit. And his spirit lets me know all the things that have been freely given unto me. And the things that God has freely given unto me, if I could wrap it up, it's his grace. I receive the grace of God to do a job that looks like naturally I cannot do, but I can do it by his grace. When it looks like I'm not qualified naturally to do what they say I can do. Naturally, I'm not qualified, but by his grace. Oh, glory to God. I don't make enough money to live in the house that I live in. And it don't look like I'm ever going to have it. But by his grace. By his grace. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. You know, I shouldn't be alive. They told me I would die of this. But by the grace of Almighty God, I am alive today. Oh, glory to God. Are you hearing me? Naturally, it looks like I don't qualify. What was given to me free by his grace. Hallelujah. And it is the Spirit of God that has given me and allowing me to see the things that have been freely given unto me. Listen. Now, let me, let's, let's look at this. Let's go, let's look at this a little further. I, I feel your faith now. <laughs> Glory to God. I was concerned for a minute there. I was like, what church is this? Y'all all visitors today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you ever get to a place where you've heard a word so much that you don't need to hear that. It's... <laughs> Listen. Now I'm not moved by your shouting and your crying and your clapping and all that. I'm just talking about there's something on the inside of you that's got to make a to connection to the word of God that you're hearing your baby ought to be leaping in your womb when you hear the word of God. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at this real quick. Romans chapter 8. Now God says, verse 29, that God whom he foreknow, he foreknew you. And he predestined you. Listen. God knew you. We remember we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. God foreknew you. He knew you before you ever got here. You know that, right? Somebody said, I know that. Hallelujah. He foreknow, to, to know, foreknow means to know before. He knew you before. He foreknew you and he predestined you. Remember we read in Ephesians, he predestined you to be adopted. Hallelujah. He predestined you and I to be conformed into the image of his son. Now, God, you, you got to get this because I got to go, I got to review a lot of stuff that we've taught before so you can get what God is doing in your life today so you can experience the grace of God on your life because we thought that there are so many things naturally that we have to do to experience spiritual things there are some things that you have to do spiritually to experience spiritual things, but your natural will not stop you from receiving what God has for you by his grace. 
But don't get me, don't get me wrong. There are some things you have to do spiritually. Hallelujah. That's for next week. But here, you got to know what's yours first. <laughs> he foreknew you, predestined you, that be conformed to the image of his son. Why? Hebrews 3, 1 and 3 says that Jesus is the express image of the Father. God created you to be like him. Adam messed that up. So here's Jesus as your example. He is the express image of who I am. And I have predestined you to be conformed or changed into his image so you will look like him and look like me. You'll be like Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You'll be able to say, if you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. For as Jesus is, so am I. Oh, glory to God. So he predestined you, gave you a destiny before you got here that Jesus would be the firstborn among many brethren, that you be born again. Moreover, whom he has predestined, he also called. And whom he called, he justified. Whom he justified, he glorified. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He predestined me. Gave me a destiny in life, called me, and he called you. Um, uh, what's the boy name? Paul. <laughs> Paul, no offense. Paul, the apostle Paul, said it this way in Galatians 1:15. It pleased God to separate me from my mother's womb and call me by his grace that he would reveal his son in me. Oh God. Jesus in me. And it pleased God to call me by grace so that what he put inside of me would be seen. It would be revealed. He called you, hallelujah. Then he justified you. Remember, just as if you never sinned, you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. His blood purchased your life. Sin itself cannot stop you from activating the grace of God on your life because where sin abounds, Romans tells us, grace abounds that much more. I've been justified. And whom he has justified, he also glorified. Glorified. If you could somehow, I don't know how. It cannot even be done. But just imagine if you could somehow take the glory, the awesomeness of our God, the creator of heaven and earth, the El Elyon, the most high God, your master, your savior, your deliverer, your healer, your provider, the creator of all of universe, of all that there is, all of who God is. If you could somehow package it, God packaged all of who he is and put it on the inside of you. He glorified you. God in you. Glorified you. Now he says, now, what shall you say to these things? If God be for you, who could be against you? Now he that delivered up his own son, he spared not. He delivered up Jesus for your sake. He delivered up his own self, son, for you. How shall he not with him freely give you all things. <laughs> he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him show you his favor, give you his grace, freely give you all things? He's given you all things. So he says to you then, as a result, he's given you, listen to me, he's given you all things. So who can lay a charge to God's elect? What would you be guilty of when he freed you? Who can lay 
a charge to God's elect. It is God that justified you. His blood justifies you. Who is it that can condemn you? Christ died for you. The Bible says, yes, he died for you, and he's, God raised him from the dead. He sit at the right hand of the Father, and he is making intercessions for you. What is he interceding? Everything that my blood purchased for you, he's making sure you get everything that pertains to life and godliness, that you have all the spiritual blessings that are in heavenly places that are in him. Oh, glory to God. He's making intercession for you. Hallelujah. So he's given you, he's freely, that's grace, freely given you all things. And he's given you these all things by his spirit. Hallelujah. Listen. Luke chapter 11, it says, listen, if you ask him for bread, would he give you a serpent? If you ask for an egg, or an egg, would he give you a serpent? If you ask for bread, would he give you a stone? No. Now he said, now if you being evil know how to give your children good gifts, how much more will your Father which is in heaven give, listen, give the Holy Ghost to them that ask? Now he's giving you his spirit to them that ask. Why? I know we use this spirit, I mean, we use this scripture to talk about getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And yes, you need the Holy Ghost, Holly, and to speak it in other tongues. But he will give you the Holy Ghost. If, you, if your son asked for bread, you wouldn't give him a stone. If you asked for an egg, you wouldn't give him a serpent. But if he said, but God will give you the Holy Spirit that at, when you ask. Why? His spirit will reveal to you the thing that have been freely given unto you. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Still there? I know I just spoke most of it to you, but let's back up so you can see this. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searched the heart knoweth is in the mind of the Spirit, because he make intercessions for us according to the will of God. And so he's given us the Spirit so that we will know the things that have been freely given unto us. The Spirit help with our infirmities, our inability to get the results. There are, th there are some things that you cannot do in any kind of way to get what God has for you. It is by His grace. And the Spirit of God help you with your infirmities because we don't always know how to pray as we ought to. But the Spirit of God will pray with groanings on the inside of you that you would know it will reveal to you and bring you into the perfect will of God for your life, the things that God has graced you with. The Spirit will reveal those things. So when you don't know what to pray, when you don't know what to say, I always say, Irobo surimana. It's the Spirit of God revealing to me what God has given me by His grace. Hallelujah. So God will give you the Holy Spirit when you ask. And so that you can know the things that have been freely given to you of God. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 says that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. You and I cannot enter into your inheritance in the kingdom of God by your flesh. Everything that God has for you is revealed to you by the Spirit of God. And so God wants to reveal to you the things that have been freely given to you by the Spirit. And so God has graced you, not placed his grace on your life for you to receive 
and for you to be and to do all that God has graced you to be and to do. And it's by the Spirit that you will see the things that God has for you. The natural man cannot receive it. Flesh and blood cannot inherit it. But the Word of God will cause you to enter in to your inheritance. Look at Acts chapter 20. Somebody said, I'm going to walk in my inheritance. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 20. Are you there? Verse 32. And it says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. It is the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you inheritance. His word is able to give you inheritance and God has placed his word on the inside of you. And when you build yourself up in the word of God, you will receive your inheritance and it didn't come from flesh and blood, it comes by the spirit of God. And so you and I have got to activate the grace of God, the word of God that's on the inside of us. And you and I do this by faith. Remember the last time we taught that faith becomes a bridge from the spiritual world into this natural world. And it's your faith is always in response to what God has already done. If you believe that God is going to do something for you, that is not faith. Faith is always in response to what God has already done. Do you believe he's already done it? He said he's already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And so it is your faith that activates the grace of God on your life, what God has already done for you and I. Are you with me? Now, you and I have got to release your faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But those that come to God, they what? Must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So I know that, here's just reviewing, Romans 5, 2 said that we have access by faith into this grace. Now, we'll access the grace of God by our faith. What God has already done for us. Turn to your neighbor one more time because he's slipping. Say, it's already done. Somebody said, it's already done. Now here, turn to Philemon. Philemon. That's the New Testament. Hallelujah. Right sandwich right between Titus and Hebrew. One little chapter, Philemon. Are you there? He says, verse 6, read it with me. That the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So he says that your faith... The communication of your faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in me that is in Christ Jesus. I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings. I delivered my own son so that you would know the things that have been freely given unto you. The communication of your faith will be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in me that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. (laughs) Genesis chapter 1. Let's just go there so you can see this thing. God, the Bible says, keep in mind everything we've just discovered and just put in our hearts and mind this morning, that 
God chose me in him before the foundation of the world. And he chose me and predestined me to be adopted. He redeemed me, glory to God, by the blood of his son so that you and I will experience what Peter was saying, grace and peace be multiplied to us and that we will experience all things that pertain to life and godliness, that God predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son, which is the express image of the father. And God created us in Genesis 1:26. He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. God created you to have dominion in this earth. So when God created you and I, Let's back up some more. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form, without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Y'all remember the story? <laughs> and then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And then God separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. In the morning, in the evening, or the first day. Y'all remember the stories? <laughs> when God created the heavens and the earth, how many know he created it perfect? And when it says the earth was without form and void and darkness, on, that is, is, is giving us a picture if you read throughout the history of the, of the word of God, giving you a picture of Satan getting the left foot of fellowship, being kicked out of heaven, now in the earth, and now it's dark. You understand. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when God created the earth and the heavens, he created it with the ability to be successful. He created it with the ability to produce all that is said as an earth and as a heaven would produce. There are things that God intended for this earth to have and to see and to manifest, and he already put it within it when he created it. He already put everything in the earth it would need to be successful and to be the earth that God created it to be. Hallelujah. And so God is not creating things again. He already put within his creation everything it would need to be. So when God comes back on the scene and said, let there be light, he's calling something that already was in existence in the earth and its ability to shine. When he wanted the vegetation, he spoke to the earth and said to the earth, bring forth vegetation. Where did the vegetation come from? It came from the earth. Where did the trees come from? It came from the earth. Where did the stuff come from? The trees, the vegetation, and all the things. It came from the earth. So he spoke to the earth, his creation, and told it, bring forth. And so within the earth, it's its ability to be successful in every realm of existence. And that's why when sin came into the earth, that the earth is not in its position to, re to be successful because of sin, because of your position. That's why the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God to take their position because God created you to have dominion over the whole earth and to subdue it. Because you're, oh my God, as God created being, he created this earth to be inhabited by man. And the earth will always respond to man. I got, so when he wanted the f creatures in the sea, he spoke to the waters to bring forth. And, it did. and then he caused every seed to produce after its kind. And so here in the, verse 26, let us make man in our image. When God wanted to make man, he didn't speak to the earth. 
He said, let us. Just like he said, let the earth bring forth. He said, let us. Because I was in him before the foundation of the world. I was called. I was called. Man in me be. In my image, be in my likeness and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over everything that creep upon the face of the earth. That's why God brought all the animals to Adam. Whatever Adam called it, that's what it was. It's going to give, it's going to respond to whatever you say. It gets its existence from you. But he put that in you. Just like he put in his creation of the earth everything it would need to be successful. And he puts what's inside of man. Every, when he created man, he put everything inside of this man to be successful in life. Listen to me. Everything you need in your whole entire life to be successful, for you to be or to do whatever God's called you to be and to do, that's his grace. It's already been placed on the inside of you. It's in you. It's already been done. It's just a calling out of what's already inside of me. Before there were ever a car made, before there was ever an airplane, God put the blueprint inside of a man, and when that man tapped into that blueprint, was on the inside of him, we get to enjoy the things that have been freely. Oh my God. Oh, glory to God. Freely given us of God. You, you have so much on the inside of you. God has placed all the things that pertain to life and godliness on the inside of you. It's in you. And so when God desires to bring the things that he placed on the inside of you, he's given you seed. The word of grace will build you up and give you an inheritance. Mark chapter 4. So is the kingdom of heaven as if a man would cast seed into the ground. He doesn't know how it's going to produce. He can rest, go to sleep, and he knows that that seed is going to eventually come up. God has given you his word. Do I need to back up some more? You are God's created being. You created in the image and the likeness of God. Genesis 2, 7 said that God formed man from the dust of the ground. He gave you an earth suit. That's just an earth suit. That's all that is. You, you're not dirt. You're a spirit. You're like God. <laughs> but he gave you an earth suit to live in the earth. He breathed into your nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul or another speaking spirit. And God made the deposit of his word on the inside of you that when you speak his word, that word that he put on the inside of you would manifest. So is the king, king listen, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom, but so is the kingdom of heaven is if a man would cast seed into the ground and enter in a place of rest. What is that? It's done. I got seed in the ground. I don't see anything. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's done. Was it done when I put the seed in the ground? Was it done when it just manifested? I'm activating what God has already placed on the inside of me, and it's a release of it through the words of my mouth. When you speak words... You activate the grace of God, hallelujah, on your life. And so you and I have got to be very careful about how we know what you say out of your mouth. Because unlike the devil has lied to us and said that he's, the, you know, that he's in control over this earthly realm, 
He's not in control. God gave you dominion. He gave you authority, told you to subdue the earth, and so he's given you his word to do so. And so, John 15, don't have much time left. John 15, he said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be what? <laughs> if my word abides in you, lives in you, dwells in you, make its home inside of you, you can ask what you, I probably should turn to these scriptures because y'all just looking at me. Hallelujah. So I know that scripture passed in, no you don't, you got to look at it. John 15, two more scriptures and then I'm going to close. Are you there? Verse 7. Oh, let me get there. I'm ahead of myself. Glory to God. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Now, we're going to revisit this again too as well. He says that if you abide in me, live in me, dwell in me, walk in me, talk in me, and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. 1 John chapter 2. Glory to God. Somebody say, you got to abide in the word. First John chapter 2, are you there? For whosoever, verse 5, for whosoever keep his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith he abide in him ought himself also to walk even as he walks. Now, if you abide in him, you ought to walk even as he walked. Whosoever keep the word of God, verily is the love of God perfected in him. Hereby we know that we are in him. If you, listen, abide in me, how do I know that I abide in him? If I keep his word. And if I keep his word, he said, you abide in me and my words abide in you. You will ask what you will and it shall be done. And so I've got to abide in him. And I know I'm abiding in him when I'm keeping his word. That means you've got to keep the word of God. Keep what God has said to you. Stick with what God has said and what God has spoken. You cast that seed in the ground, the seed of God's word, the word of grace that's able to build you up and give you your inheritance, keeping the word of the living God. You abide in him and his word abiding on the inside of you, you can ask what you will and it will be done unto you. But James tells us, turn to James, but when you ask, you must ask in faith. You have to believe the word of God. You have to trust God. Take him at his word. Believe that what I'm asking for, he's already given it. It's already on the inside of me. He's already made the deposit inside of me. I have everything I need to be successful. He's given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Verse 5, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him, verse 6, but let him ask how? In faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers like the wave of a sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man thinketh that he, or think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now God has already given you, but what's stopping you from receiving? Remember, if you ask for bread, I'm not going to give you a stone. If you ask an egg, I'm not going to give you a serpent. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost when you ask. But you got to ask in faith. If you don't ask in faith, you have doubt in your heart. He said, you don't receive anything. So my faith become the bridge 
to this spiritual world and to this natural world, trusting and believing God, enter into a place of rest, knowing that what God has for me, somebody shout, it's finished. It's finished. Somebody shout, it's done. It's done. Somebody said, I have, I have all, things all things that pertain, that pertain to, life to life and godliness. And godliness. He's, already He's already blessed me with all blessings, with all blessings. In, heavenly in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus, the deposit has been made in my life. It's done. Glory to God. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody shout, it's done. I believe. I receive what God has deposited. In my, life. in my life and I will activate, I will activate the, grace the grace of God by my faith, by my faith. I, believe. I believe I receive, I receive. My, portion. my portion divine healing, divine healing. favor, favor. Grace. grace prosperity, prosperity. Provisions. provisions victory, victory. Deliverance. deliverance salvation, salvation. It, all it all belongs to me, belongs to me. I have the blueprint for success, for success inside of me, inside of me. It's, the it's the word of God, the grace of God, grace of God. that will bring me, will bring into, me. My into my inheritance. I believe, I, believe. I, receive. I receive, it's done. It's done. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. Come on, grab the hand of your neighbor. I want you to pray. I want us to pray for one another. Let's just believe God and stir up the gift of God on the inside of you.